Hello and welcome to the Video Zone. These real cool characters here are the Blood Dolls. Uh, they are the stars of a film that we're shooting next month uh, called Blood Dolls, and this picture will be out in early 1999. I'm excited because I'm directing this film. It'll be the only film in 1998 that I'll get the chance to direct. Let me introduce them. You've got uh, Ms. Fortune over here. Next to her, this ugly guy with the tattoos and chains is called Sideshow. And of course, my favorite one is this character here called Pimp Doll. I can't tell you exactly what these characters do in the movie, but you can count on the fact that it is awfully bizarre. And of course, I'll see you on the next edition of The Video Zone. When I was writing um, Subspecies 2 and 3, I sort of wrote them as one long story so that uh, 2 picked up where number 1 left off, 3 picks up exactly where number 2 left off, and somehow I, I had the momentum of uh, the idea that Subspecies was going to be a series that at the end of part 3, I left it very open-ended, and they get away from Radu. Radu seems to be dead, but uh, there was no real resolution for Michelle. And I think the people that liked the series were a little distraught with me for not, you know, resolving the story properly. And uh, I felt it when I watched it, you know, that there was like something left hanging. But always in my mind, there was the hope that we would get around to doing part four. It has been six years since we made uh, part two and part three. And those were made back to back, as you know, over a course of three months. And, uh, came back and they, you know, put out part two, put out part three a couple years later. And uh, apparently there had been a lot of fan mail and uh, people wanted to know, does Michelle make it back to the States? Does Redu come back to life? And uh, so I had gotten a call from uh, the production office and at the time I was like completely bleach blonde and uh, because I'd taken a bit of a hiatus actually from acting. I had a, went and had myself a kid and um, so I took some time off and, and, you know, always wanted to bleach my hair. So I got this call and I thought, you know, I, I was really like not in the acting mode, but I, I just couldn't have somebody else be Michelle. This poor child has been ravaged by a vampire. A vampire? Uh, I started out with a script uh, that was going to pick up right where number three left off and carry on with the uh, story of Michelle and Rebecca, Michelle's sister, and Mel Thompson from the U.S. Embassy. Wrote a script that, um, uh, in which they took Michelle to a clinic and tried to cure her of her vampirism, either through blood transfusions or whatever kind of nutty Romanian scientific technology might exist at the time. Um, wrote that script, and then when we st set about trying to get everybody back together again. And Honest got aboard really fast. Denise really wanted to do it. Uh, Melanie was kind of busy with her own career at the moment and Kevin suddenly got a, uh, a soap opera and couldn't do it. So I kind of went back to Charlie and said, you know what, uh, maybe we've got to rethink this because I couldn't really see continuing the series without the same actors. Uh, so. We went back to an idea that we had always kind of played with when we were shooting Subspecies 2 and 3 uh, when I'd be sort of pissed off at everybody and I'd say, you know what, Subspecies 4, you guys are going to die in a car wreck. When I first read the script, it, was, it had my sister in it and it had the American Embassy man. Um, 
and uh, so, but the, the revision of it, I actually really liked the revision of it. I, I felt it was a little more focused towards the, the vampire part of the story. And, um, and to be able to work with Ted again, who's so silly, he's so charming. Um, it, it's just odd that, that a man who's so sweet and silly could make such dark, gothic drama. Um, and, and he does a brilliant job at it, so I was really looking forward that, that he also was going to be directing it. Um, there needed to be something, some stable through line. If I couldn't have my sister and if I couldn't have, uh, you know, the American Embassy guy, uh, then I had Ted and, and of course, Honest. Michelle, I can save you from this storm and if you will come to me, I feel on free will. Never. It was interesting because bringing Honest back and Denise back, uh, they kind of already are their characters. And it's a matter of really getting Honest kind of back into the bitter uh, sickness of that character. And Denise trying to get her down into that place in her, which is that dying to escape from from this evil that's like kind of growing within her and so uh with denise it's a, it's like a more emotional kind of battle for her to kind of get to that place because she's basically really kind of peppy and happy and likes to enjoy her daily life and then to reach in to find that that you know place of tragedy is like a real uh, it's a big stretch for her um so we, you know, had some rehearsals and basically it was like, oh yeah, this is, we just picked, left off two months ago and here we are playing the same parts again. Let's just hit the ground running. Now, prove yourself, let me. Let there be a bloodbath. I just, I, I actually could get weepy over him, you know? There's a part of me that just hates his guts sometimes for being so rude and crude. Um, and yet, the, the admiration and love that I have for him as an artist and as a friend and someone who, who's like there for you um, it is just huge. He has amazing natural instincts. And, you know, no, he doesn't, he's not one of these actors that has to go and, and make a tomb of character notes. Um, he, uh, he's just, he's very visceral, he's very on the surface, and, and by now, especially, even for both of us, the character, it's pretty much on autopilot. I mean, he's got Radu down, and, and he knows, um, basically, if, if Ted is, like, suppressing a laugh during a take, he knows that he nailed it. There, there is a certain um, macabre sort of style of acting that, that Honest does that's so over the top, that's just so brilliantly him. And you should fear me too. Because I'm a monster. As my child. Master. When I wrote Vampire Journals, I sort of, uh included just in kind of a line of dialogue that Ash, the music-loving vampire, is descended from Radu of Transylvania. Uh, just because I wanted to begin to create that connection between all of these vampire stories. Drink blood with us. Ash comes in with the idea that he is the lord of his lair. And Honest comes in with the idea that he is the baddest ass vampire that ever lived. And so it was very funny the night that I introduced the two of them in the hotel bar at the Lebeda and uh, just watched the kind of strange dynamics. And the moment when Jonathan understood that Radu is the master and Ash is the protege in this case. You could see when they were performing together there was almost this fear of Jonathan um, for Honest, and with Honest, there was this joy, this you know um, opportunity to be able to put a knife to this Pilati boy. You know, I mean, that it's like that, that's sort of my take on it, and, and it's said with love. Um, but uh, you know, when when somebody really just it's completely not their philosophy, they're going to use 
that to feed them in a scene. And, uh, and you can definitely see it with, uh, with the two of them. <laughs> I've nurtured our holdings for a hundred years. I have earned your generosity. I generously give you till full moon to evacuate my stronghold. You and your fledglings must find a new sanctuary. I set out in Subspecies 4 to kill Radu definitively. <laughs> so that people who have watched this series up till now will feel some sense of closure for Denise, for Radu, and it's over. But Radu always manages to survive. I don't know how he's gonna survive this one. I really have not the slightest idea. There are drips of it. I mean, please, I'm tell my daughter asks, what's that subspecies? And I tell her, it helps put Radu back together. And so, you know, for the last couple weeks, I've been playing, let's put Radu back together. And she's made the Tyrannosaurus Rex eat him, you know, we've had, you know, Willy the Orca Whale eat him. But that subspecies keeps putting him together. And if my three-year-old can make that happen, then, you know, the 30-year-old engineers who are doing the special effects can definitely do it. When I think of subspecies, I think of Romania, castles, Transylvania, darkness, spending long nights on the streets of Bucharest. Uh, shadows flying over historic buildings. I am proud that of all the girls that they saw seven years ago, um, that I got this. And I had no idea that it was going to be such a well-received cult uh, piece of vampiric history. Um, it, it, it wasn't actually the path that I was going as an actress. I was doing a lot of prime time television shows, sitcom stuff, commercials. So the fact that I was able to just like throw down for this character and get it, and that it's become such a, um, a huge, important part of the sci-fi genre, is uh, it, it's thrilling to me. As I was killing him in this movie, I thought, die, you bastard. This is the end of this series. Having finished it, and missing Honest a little bit because he lives in Denmark and we just talk by phone, and missing Denise because she lives in LA but we still just talk by phone. And missing Romania and missing Adolfo. Uh, I don't know, I think maybe he could come back. ago, they vanished without a trace. Now, Andre Toulon's puppets have found a new home and a new puppet master. I'm Dr. McGrill. I run the marble show out on Route 23. Whoa. 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 Fastest six guns in the West, six shooter. Give me a hand, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Who wants to steal their secrets? See, I've tried to duplicate that process, but I've never been able to make a living puppet. I've come close. Help me. To create the perfect species. You see, I want to carve a living puppet just like these. And you have a special skill. And I need you to carve me a miracle. But he's about to discover the Toulon's magic. You may be the first of a new race of beings, a superior race. Has a deadly price. In this place, 
there is a secret. The hell is that? Six have come here to stay. The hospital? It's been empty for something like 50 years. One has found the key. To unlock the mystery. Somebody in this place has stumbled onto something and they're getting close. Trapped within its walls. Fifty years ago, something happened here. Seven people were killed by something. Now, the others must find a way out. It's not the same lock. Somebody replaced it. Before they become its next victim. If you hear it, it's too late. For more information about Full Moon and our films, write to Full Moon Pictures, 8721 Santa Monica Boulevard, Suite 526, West Hollywood, California, 90069. Or visit our website at fullmoonpictures.com. And for fan club and ordering information, call our toll-free number, 1-877-315-6666. That's 1-877-315-MOON.